Lost Childhood, Growing Up in an Alcoholic Family, was funded in part by the Lucille Packard Foundation for Children's Health, promoting the physical health and emotional well-being of children in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties of California. Additional funding provided by the California Wellness Foundation, the California Healthcare Foundation, the Cuccarelli Family Foundation, the California Endowment, the San Francisco Foundation, and by the following. felt sad because I didn't like it when he did it. I, I just wanted him to stop. And me and my big sister would get so scared. I hid under my bed sometimes even. They're addicted to alcohol. It happened almost every night. And when they take one drink, they have to have more. I was mad because I, I knew I wasn't going to have a childhood. The biggest question is that I want to know why it happened to me and not to somebody else. Hello, I'm Emerald Ye. When parents can't stop drinking, their children also pay the price. Right now in the U.S., 11 million children are growing up in an alcoholic family. But there's no statistic that measures the emotional toll it takes on these children, even into adulthood. 17 years ago, I talked with some children of alcoholics. They were very young, but they spoke with a wisdom and experience beyond their years. And I couldn't help but wonder how they would grow up. Well, over the next half hour, I'd like to introduce you to some of those children, then and now. Our story begins in 1986. Summer Camp. Golden Times. You can only catch them in slow motion. Lazy Days. Gotcha. Making New Friends. And sharing stories. It was scary when my dad drank. My mom and dad would get into fights, and then he would end up like throwing things. Me and my sister would be in my room. I would be real, real scared. When my mom didn't come home one night, I thought she died. Were you scared? Yeah. And then where did you find her? We found her at a bar. Alcoholism. It affects one in four American families. And when parents drink, they leave their children with the emotional hangover. Well, growing up in an alcoholic household is a nightmare. There's chaos, there's unpredictability. You never know what's gonna happen next. Broken promises. Jerry Moe, a counselor specializing in alcoholic families. Normally, he sees these kids once a week, but he thought it might be helpful to start a summer camp where they can get away and play and spend more time together. Let's see if we can put some feelings on the board. Angry. Angry. Aaron. Frightened. Frightened and scared. The laws, the unspoken laws that children learn in an alcoholic family. Uh, don't talk about what's happening. Uh, don't share your feelings. Don't feel. Hide your pain. And don't trust in the other people. We have angry and mad, embarrassed, depressed. Jerry unloved, builds trust one word at a time wanted, until the children themselves are able to talk. Talk about what's going on behind their happy faces. Five, six. Well, I hate him when he's drinking, but I hate to say I hate him because I don't when he's not. But I do hate him when, um, when he is drinking. She crashed and then got in an accident, and then she had to get a cast. 
Did that upset you? How Made me she? sad. Like they blamed it on me and I thought it was all my fault. I thought I made them drink. I just want to keep on being a kid. Being a kid is the other part of what this camp is all about. But some games are more serious than others. Today, they're learning coping skills through a game called Wheel of Misfortune. It's about 9 o'clock, and you come home, and you walk in the door, and there's your mom passed out on the front room carpet. What do you do? You could just put a blanket over and go to bed. Jenny. I would call the ambulance. There you go. Call an ambulance. OK? OK, very good. Well, it teaches me that it's a disease and like, no, it's not your fault and you didn't cause it and stuff. But you can cope with it though. Are you coping? Trying, yeah, I'm working at it. I just have to take care of myself because that's the most important thing, to take care of yourself. And then your parents? I can't take care of them. Only 5% of children of alcoholics get any help. Without help, more than half these children are likely to become alcoholics themselves. I don't want to, but I never know. Does that worry you? Yeah. I'm not even in fourth grade yet. I have a long ways to go. <laughs> On the fifth day, they say goodbye. And go home with their parents. <laughs> They'll be taking along what they learned here, back to the real, imperfect world. And together, the family will continue to heal. This was a 1986. Those children are now adults. So how have they done since? I hate him when he's drinking. But I hate to say I hate him because I don't when he's not. But I do hate him when, um, when he is drinking. He was a good dad when it came, when he, when he wasn't drinking. He was nurturing, he was loving, he was caring. I don't ever look back at my father and think he was a bad father. He was a sick father. Juliana is now 25, at peace with her father's alcoholism. <laughs> we first met her when she was eight years old, struggling to learn very adult lessons at a very young age. That it wasn't her fault that she's not alone, and perhaps hardest of all, that she can't control her dad's drinking. He's been like an alcoholic for like 10 years now. Um, I haven't is, I, when I was born, he was an alcoholic. Juliana's father never stopped drinking. Human beings have limits, and some people's limits are larger than others, and his just wasn't big enough. He just didn't have the strength as a person to stop, and it was really disappointing and incredibly sad. I think it was, it's nobody's fault now, but um, I got help. That's all I need was help. But how do you get help when you're five years old and your parents went drinking? And I was given that help. Grace is now 24, grateful that when she was little, her parents realized she needed some special attention. They sent her to Children's Place at Sequoia Hospital, a year-round counseling program with an annual summer camp for kids just like her. When you're seven years old, you really, you put the entire world on your shoulders. And you're scared and you don't know. And having friends your age who are going through the same thing means that maybe the world's not just on yours. It's on everybody else's too, and you can get better. 
Grace's father stopped drinking when she was five. He hasn't had a drink since. He decided that being a parent and being a husband were what he wanted to do. But even if a parent stops drinking, the impact on the children lasts for years, even a lifetime. They're at much higher risk for emotional problems. Scary and nightmarish. I was scared of living life and getting hurt, so I just hurt myself instead. And because alcoholism can run in the family, children are often fearful they'll start drinking themselves. This is Grace at 10, three years after we first met her. I don't want to become myself an alcoholic, and um, I have more chance of drinking than not drinking, probably. When did you start? When I was 15, I would say. Like, I, I would say, like, really heavy drinking, probably when I was 18. Grace also tried to kill herself at the age of 14 with an overdose of pills. I'm really your classic child of an alcoholic. I pretty much did all that stuff, those statistics, that would be me. Children of alcoholics are four times more likely than other kids to become alcoholics themselves. It's unrealistic to expect any program to keep all these kids from drinking, but early childhood counseling can make a difference. Grace is now in recovery. The program allowed me when I was 23 to get help versus waiting until I was 33 and destroyed not just my life, but everybody else's. Grace hopes to follow her father's example of lifelong sobriety. As wonderful as the children's program was for me, I never want my children to be in one. You know, that's really the bottom line. I feel kind of sad that they have to get in a divorce because, um, because of my dad's drinking. Mm -hmm. I just want to keep on being a kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At eight, you're eight, you're just a little teeny, I was just a little teeny girl. So I didn't know it was crucial then. I didn't know I needed it. I liked going. I don't like to see my dad jump. It was Juliana's mother who put her in the Children's Place program. What really, really helped me the most was being able to sort of take the time and be sad and not have to, you know, button up and go to school or not cry or move on or, you know, I really just let myself be really sad and now I'm done. <laughs> Another key survival skill Juliana learned was to take care of herself first and not protect her father, a difficult lesson for an eight-year-old. I had to say, look, you're not supposed to be doing that. I need to call my mom or I need to call my sister and I need to leave now. And it's just heartbreaking because that's your parent. So you learn to do it though? Yes, over and over and over again. They did this for identification. Juliana never developed a drinking problem herself, but she lost her father to alcoholism. He died at the age of 47. She was 16. She misses him the most during her important life passages. I'm moving away from my family. I'm moving. I'm leaving California. What would he think? How would he deal with it? Would he be sad? Would he be angry? Like, what would he be? I miss... I don't know, and I wish I knew. Or, what if I get married? Like, that's a really, really tough thing to think about. So, would I want him back? Even if he was still drinking? I don't... I can't say yes or no. Juliana couldn't change her father's fate, but Grace is determined to change her own. That's what these programs give you, is the ability to get out of it. You're no longer just a statistic, you're beating the statistics. So you may become one, but you also have a way to become a different statistic. Grace is about to graduate from college with a double major in history and geography. She just got engaged and now hopes to pursue a culinary career. I see a world of possibilities now. I see that, you know, I've gotten over a really big obstacle and that a lot more things are open to me. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Juliana worked in retail and advertising in San Francisco. So this is what Murphy's going in. But is now moving to Michigan to be with her boyfriend. This is our dog, Molly. She's already in Michigan with Matt. And this is Matt on Lake Michigan, where we're going to live. As Juliana, too, prepares to move on with her life, 
she is no longer haunted by this question she asked us when we went back to summer camp three years after we first met her. I want to know why it happened to me and not to somebody else. Do you have an answer for that? No, I mean, there is no answer. I have no idea why. I wouldn't be who I am now if I hadn't gone through those things and I wouldn't understand the things I understand and my perspective about issues would be different. So I don't feel so why me anymore. Do you feel pretty hopeful about life ahead? Definitely. Since Juliana and Grace first went to Children's Place for help, another generation of children has come through. Next, we go back to summer camp and find out how today's children of alcoholics are doing. Well, let's put our hands down by our sides. While Juliana and Grace were spending their early years in the Children's Place program, Ready? these children weren't even born. I grew up, I want to be an architect because I'm good at math. Well, when we grew up, Kelsey and I would like to become paleontologists. Really? Yeah. I have a big interest in dinosaurs. Now this next generation is learning to excavate their emotions about their parents drinking and bring them to the surface. I was real scared and sad and I wish she wasn't drunk. I'd worry like like every day um, if she was going to make it without drinking. 17 years after our first visit to summer camp, the week-long retreat is still held every summer, where new crops of kids go through some deeper healing during their annual getaway from alcoholism at home. Childhood is a magical time. And so many children who are now adults that grew up in alcoholic homes try to go back and capture that magical child that was let go of a long time ago in order to survive. And, you know, my hope is that these kids won't have to go back and capture that magical child because they're getting it now while they're still children. When we first met Jerry Moe in 1986, he was a pioneer in his work with children of alcoholics. 15,000 kids have come through his program at Children's Place since he started it 25 years ago. It's the longest running program of its kind in the country. We're gonna laugh sometimes. Sometimes some of us might cry. What's changed over the years is that children live in an even more complicated world. More broken families, more poverty, and hardcore drug use. But Jerry's games and activities are still effective as life lessons, teaching kids to share feelings, problem solve, and take care of themselves. We want to connect feelings with defenses. He now teaches others his methods, lecturing around the world. Feeling? Defense. Jerry is still working with children daily. In one of his favorite exercises, he teaches them to differentiate between their parents and the disease of alcoholism by having them write a letter. Dear alcoholism, you have really screwed up my family. Because of you, my parents got a divorce and you hurt my sister and I. I hate you so much I can't describe the hate I have for you. At the core of it all, one thing remains constant over the years, the children's desperate need to have their parents take care of them. Jerry tells the story of a little girl who wrote a paper about her feelings and tried to read it to her mother. And she put it down and she started to cry and she said, look, we can give away the pets, take my bike, take the computer. I don't need new clothes for school. I don't need any of those things. Give it all away. I just want you to stop drinking. It's all I want, Mom. You just stop. You just stop. And that's all. That's all I want. Stop drinking. Hug me, love me, play with me. Be a part of my life. So that part hasn't changed. That's, that's at the core for these boys and girls. There's a reason Jerry Moe has such a gift for unlocking these children's innermost feelings. He himself is a child of an alcoholic. I bring my own little kid inside to camp every year. He has a chance to play and to laugh 
and to have a good time and to really be with the other little kids here. With a common bond being that we've all suffered in some way from alcoholism, but that we're all getting better today. Slowly, one at a time, put them in the fire. As the children burn their letters to alcoholism, it reinforces a hard truth for them, that nothing they can do can stop their parents from drinking, no matter what role they take on in the family, no matter how perfect they try to be. When I try to say, like, can you please stop doing, like, drinking? He said, oh, I'll try, and then he's drinking again. I try to put fruit juice in to make it taste bad, so she would maybe spit it out or pour it down the drain. The Beach Boys. When things are shaky at home, children need caring adults they can turn to and trust. Yeah. Research shows the presence of a nurturing adult, even outside the family, can make the difference in how a child survives being in an alcoholic family. Kids don't care about how much you know until they know about how much you care. And once that starts, we build a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I see these kids who were growing up too fast kind of taking some steps back. <coughs> and all of a sudden wanting to play and wanting to giggle and wanting to, you know, stay up late at camp with flashlights and playing games. What I'd like you to do is write down a problem that you've experienced in your family. But the safety because net of programs like Children's Place is being shredded. Alcohol. Half the programs around when we first interviewed Jerry Moe are now gone due to lack of funds. We know where the next generation of alcoholics and addicts are because these boys and girls are at highest risk. We know that, but we're not gearing enough prevention efforts towards this group. When mom gets drunk, she falls down and gets hurt. I can't even tell you what I think it would be like not having that. I really needed that to become who I am today. It allowed me to take care of myself at a much younger age than a lot of people do, and that, that's the difference. There are no long-term studies on how kids in these programs turn out. For now, the only way to measure success is one child at a time one family at a time. I'm really proud of her. Yeah, you're proud of her? Because? Because she's not drinking anymore. She's um, spending more time with us. He, she's eating dinner with us. Happy that he stops so I can uh, play with him more. Happy endings can be elusive. No program can conquer alcoholism in our society, sometimes not even in our families. But giving children the tools to deal with addiction, theirs or their parents, is vital so they can grow up with the most important gift of all, hope. I really ultimately want parents and children to know that, you know, there's hope out there and that they're not the only one whose parent did those things, that there is no embarrassment in having a parent who's an alcoholic. I think it's also really important to remember that none of the things that you're dealing with right now are your fault, and that you can be very proud of who you are, despite the family or the situation that you're growing up with. This is a program for living, and, and hopefully, no matter if they get this disease or marry someone this, with this disease or get caught up in other kind of compulsive behaviors, that they can get beyond that and really have a life and have that no longer be the, the central unifying aspect from which everything revolves. One other thing has stayed the same since we first reported on this issue 17 years ago. And that is for every child like Juliana or Grace, there are 19 others who are not getting any help. Finally, in closing, we want to point out that all the children you saw in tonight's program had parents who in the midst of their own pain and struggles saw that their children needed help too and made sure they got it. I'm Emerald Ye. Good night. That's the most important thing, to take care of yourself. It's a disease and like, no, it's not your fault and you didn't cause it and stuff, but you can cope with it though.
Lost Childhood, Growing Up in an Alcoholic Family, was funded in part by the Lucille Packard Foundation for Children's Health, promoting the physical health and emotional well-being of children in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties of California. Additional funding provided by the California Wellness Foundation, the California Healthcare Foundation, the Cucarelli Family Foundation, the California Endowment, the San Francisco Foundation, and by the following. For more information on resources for children of alcoholics, please visit our website at lostchildhood.org. To order a VHS or DVD copy of Lost Childhood, Growing Up in an Alcoholic Family, please call 1-800-729-6686 or order online at lostchildhood.org. Music